Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. We're going to look at one of the early Free Comic Book Day comics, uh, one of the good early Free Comic Book Day comics by David Lapham. This was a flip book, Stray Bullets 2. We've looked at this on another video, so go track that down if you want to see more Dave Lapham Stray Bullets. Today we're going to look at the flip side of that. It's a Matrix story written and drawn by David Lapham, and it ties into something that we're doing here on Cartoonist Kayfabe, and that is Cartoonist Kayfabe Comic Book Christmas in July. You guys know those little local neighborhood lending libraries? They're kind of like big deluxe mailboxes stuffed full of books. Well, the last Saturday in July, we'd like you to take some of your comics and add to those local lending libraries. We know there's a lot of creators out there with comps. We know there's a lot of collectors out there with doubles. Take some of your better comics and put them in those local lending libraries, and let's create some new readers the way Free Comic Book Day created some new readers. Uh, one other thing you might want to do, Print out a sheet of paper that tells people where they can find more comics. If they like the comics that you share with them in those local lending libraries, point them to some local resources, libraries, comic book stores, half price books, whatever you have locally that they can find more comics at. Maybe point them at Cartoonist Kayfabe if they want to hear more about comics. That is the last Saturday in July. Let's make some new readers like Free Comic Book Day made some new readers. Before we dive into this, I want to invite you all to like, follow, and subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Hit that bell icon to be notified when we post new videos. You'll be the first one in line that's trying to track down the comics that we show off if it's something you need to add to your collection. Sometimes these comics disappear quickly from uh, the secondhand market, and uh, sometimes the prices go up. So you want to be the first ones in line to uh, stay ahead of the Kayfabe effect. And let these videos play through to the end. That allows YouTube's algorithm to share our videos with other comics fans who haven't found Cartoonist Kayfabe yet. It's how we grow the channel, and we appreciate your help on that. So, Ed, this is a 2002 Free Comic Book Day issue. I can't remember what year Free Comic Book Day started. I don't think this is the first year, but it's early. Yeah. And super cool to see a self-publisher, David Lapham from El Capitan and Stray Bullets, jumping on board with this thing. And uh, this is a great issue. Like I said earlier, go check out our video on the first uh, volume of Stray Bullets because amazing stories in all of those issues and this is a standout with the young virginia applejack but dave lapham was not only doing stray bullets and uh whenever he decided to do a free comic book day issue he reached out to the wachowskis and their people and uh, said hey how about a flip book and i'll run this on the back side and so at the time there was this what is the matrix.com that included works by lapham paul chadwick ted mckeever neil gaiman jeff darrow um, Dave Gibbons, like a lot of top-notch comic book artists were doing Matrix stories set in the Matrix world, and Dave Lapham was one of those creators, and so this is his self-contained Matrix short story. Yeah, it's fantastic. My my sense of time is all screwed up uh, with this comic, man, because uh, we, we were kicking it uh, at this time. Like, we knew each other, and we were hanging out at this time, and I thought just thinking about this moment in time, that Straight Bullets was well done. You know, like it was, we were divorced from fresh issues at that point. They're only in issue 25. Yes. There's like four more years worth of Stray Bullets comics coming out, and I just can't believe it. Yeah, I'm always messed up whenever it comes to uh, working out times with all of this stuff. Uh, so it's nice to have a little bit of context as to when these things are coming out and what else is part of them so interesting too that he chose um issue number two just because most cartoonists are like my new stuff is like the fresh stuff but 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 he sees that that issue number two is a special comic it really is and you know what we'll do a very fast <laughs> flipper on it because if, if anybody isn't familiar with stray bullets it's one of my favorite crime comics and uh, especially these early issues of Stray Bullets, they're all, all self-contained. They're all done in this eight-panel grid. I often talk about making comics that are readable to new readers, and this grid is a really good format for that. And uh, definitely worth your time. If you aren't familiar with Stray Bullets, please do yourself a favor and check out our video on these comics because they're exceptional. I want to do a vid on, on the next uh, round of... Uh... Yes. Issues after, after uh, the stuff that we already covered. But Matrix is the uh, topic at hand today. Yeah, and we start out with our guy in the uh, in the real world saying, it's not real, it's not real. And uh, it reminded me of just how good The Matrix is as a setup yeah. for, for a world yeah. where you can put these stories into it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you're not familiar with Matrix, what you're going to see is this cross-cutting of, like, what's going on. Back in the real world, things have 
the world of the Matrix. I'm, right. I'm never, never even sure which one to call the real world. <laughs> but uh, I guess the, the awake world of the Matrix, we've got our guy injured. The uh, His ship has come under attack. And pretty much he's the only survivor, but he's pinned down back there, which leaves him stuck in our real world setting as a normal guy. But I guess it's uh, a lot of mental games and he should be able to overcome that pain in this artificial world that we all live in. Yeah, it's it's uh you know, it's, it it has the same sort of tropes of every kind of movie adaptation that that we ever checked out like about you know, in a comics form. So it plays all the same stuff that you see in the actual movie, you know, like the agent Smith, smiths are coming. Um the the world of the matrix is not the real world uh you can man it, with that knowledge you can manipulate things in the matrix movies there is the idea of the one and he's going to be the great savior and then like when you see this fella it's like we know it's possible if you can overcome your bad logic uh or your programming um if you, if you are the one he's clearly not the one so we're get to see, we're getting to see what like a potential dude uh would be but he is not going to be the great savior and hero. That's a great point because he talks about how like this is like one of his first missions. Like he really could be Neo yeah. and that he's he's new to this and it's very overwhelming. And I thought this is like a really great cut. And there'll be several of these kind of cuts between Matrix World and our world. But one of the fellows, uh, people on the ship, and you can see that these, oh, I forget what they're called, but the, the Sentinels. Know, the Sentinels are coming in and in the real life, this is the the seconds before her head explodes. Yeah, as uh, she's erased. Yeah, and that's that whole thing, like, like uh, when people got jacked up in the car or whatever. Like in real life, they're getting unplugged from mm -hmm. from the Matrix hack. Yeah, and that's what this guy is trying to do is just survive this until some reinforcements can come and uh, and help him out. And so they find him a safe house in uh, in our world, and he kind of fluctuates between succumbing to his injuries and you know mentally overcoming his programming. As, as you mentioned, Ed. But he also still is new to this, and he has some some ties to Earth that he hasn't shaken yet, like an ex-girlfriend. Yeah. As of now, Agent Smith is not looking for him. Once he starts leaving the safe house and uh, trying to tie up some of these loose ends, he's going to get himself in trouble. And his name's Rocket, by the way. You know, think of, like, Neo, everybody having their, their cool nicknames. Yeah, their hacker names, man. His is Rocket. Yeah, the Believe it or not, there was a time when uh, it was not recommended to use your proper name sure. on the computer. I feel like we're back to that time, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> was there ever a time that you should use your proper name? <laughs> I mean, it's been proven that you shouldn't now. Um, I also liked this because I was, uh, you know, Lapham had done Valiant work before he got into Stray Bullets. You know, done other more conventional comics. But Stray Bullets, uh, eight panel grid, yeah. you know, four tiers, two columns. Here we get the four tiers, but he's breaking stuff up. He's doing, uh, you know, some different layouts that we haven't seen him do as much. So I kind of like that. This was still relatively early in my Dave Lapham appreciation, and, and seeing him stretch a little bit was really fun. Yeah, absolutely, man. And, and the Wachowskis, like, they they got a good eye, you know, like the people that they recruited to do stuff. Yeah, it's and, a nice uh, list of, of uh, creators. And through largesse or whatever you want to call it, probably made way better money making these kind of comics than any kind of print comics at, at, at this point in time. Yeah, probably, sadly, probably true. But so, he's, he's going for it, you know? He is going for it. And, and one of the things that Rocket keeps saying throughout this is stuff like, these flowers aren't real. And so he's kind of going back and forth between, I guess, the ramifications of waking up in the Matrix, which you'd see in the movies, and how... Um, not pleasant that world is yeah. compared to the illusion of our reality and so that's something that he says a few times throughout this story is this idea that the flowers aren't real but he's not saying it here because he's really buying into it and i think probably the max regret of uh taking the whichever color pill you're not wakes right. you up yeah and there's that part with that uh joey pants man where he sells out his crew in order to ha like rem have the taste of a steak yes you know one, one more time so like he knows that it's kayfabe but that's the desire for that is enough to sell out his comrades and stuff. Yeah, I think I think probably there are a lot of times in people's lives where you would take that, knowing it's an illusion, but it's still better than the reality. Yeah. Uh, this broken leg, 
he, it kind of comes and goes, you know, with him. I guess as he's like slipping in terms of programming, it reminds me of the Chester Brown, uh, yeah, Ed the Clown broken leg Absolutely. in the beginning of Yummy Fur. Absolutely, it's like comically broken. I don't know how long you're surviving with a leg break like that. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get some sepsis. It's pretty tough. A little marrow. That's a big bone to twist around that many times. Just leaves his girl high and dry too. Whenever the pain kicks in, now he's back at this diner, and of course, what happens? His old crew shows up. He used to uh, used to be a thief with these guys and kind of left them high and dry, which they did not appreciate. But his matrix programming, again calling back to like Neo's programming, he's able to uh, get rid of these guys very easily. And you see some of that matrix like effects as he leaps into the air and kills this dude. You know that's what this kick ends up doing. And as we see the aftermath of that, now he is on the radar of the Agent Smiths, and now that safe house isn't so safe. The best way to support Cartoonist Kayfabe is to buy the comics that Ed Piscor and I make. Red Room Trigger Warnings 1 through 4 is in stores now while supplies last. Every Red Room comic is self-contained story, so whatever issue your comic shop has is a great place to start. There's also Red Room, the Antisocial Network, collecting the first season of Red Room, available now wherever comics are bought and sold. Except for 28 countries where it is banned and about 10 comic shops where it's banned. But you can still request it. They can still get it for you. And you can pick up Hulk Grand Design by me. Two double-sized issues retelling the 60-year history of the Incredible Hulk in one coherent story. Featuring my art, writing, color, letters. Uh, the Grand Design treatment, so to speak. So pick these comics up wherever you buy comics and support Cartoonist Kayfabe. And now back to our regular scheduled programming. And you see, here comes the agent. Agent Brown. I wonder if that's early on. Are they? Yeah. Are, yeah. are, are those consistent? Are there multiple agents in the Matrix so. movies? Yeah, like it's, and certainly like it's always Agent Smith when they have like those uh, scenes with, with a million dudes fighting. This story, I think, really does show off Lapham's chops. I feel like he's a guy that can draw everything, and I think that was always from the beginning. Like you go back to the Valiant days, and I think that's true. I think it's underappreciated in a lot of ways because it's not flashy, but it really does allow him to do complete worlds with a wide cast of characters. I love this. This is the moment of uh, a human spies them, and now Agent Brown's going to jump into that guy. That's a pretty good effect. Yeah. For a tiny panel, it communicates it perfectly. It looks cool, and now we're in trouble. I also like whenever Agent Brown cuts back to the the uh, original guy, the civilian, yeah, it's another of those movie pieces, man. It's an interesting challenge where where uh, you're playing with an existing property. So there's a world set up, but it's work for hire. You don't necessarily want to create something super fucking awesome that they can then take or something. You know what I mean? Like It's true. Like, it's, it's, that, it's that weird back and forth that's required that sort of makes movie adaptation stuff a little bit... You could just... I, I feel a withholding in, in the creators a lot. Because, like, I'm sure Lapham could have a million ideas with this, but he's going to stick to the template. Yeah, I, I wonder how well it did pay. It reminds me of, like, the Animatrix. Like, yeah. those, they, you know, they took, the Wachowskis took the success of the Matrix and really kind of rolled it into, like, let's make this world. Yeah. Let's uh, put some of this money back into the Matrix. Absolutely. And, and you know, like, they're nerds, dude. So, like, Star Wars Expanded Universe, you know, you got to read a book to figure out how Boba Fett got that little dent in his helmet. Like, for a certain type of nerd, that's a cool thing. Yeah, definitely. And and, and, and nerds with an eye for talent. Because oh, yeah. they certainly recruited a lot of great creators to, uh, to do this kind of supplemental material. All right, so our man Rocket messes up. You know, like, he's been found out. He and his handler go separate directions, and now he calls up his girl. And uh, sadly... That's not going to go the way he wants it to. Still got the noir vibes, you know? It totally got the Venetian does. blind gimmicks. Yeah, definitely. And if you hire David Lapham at this time, I think you want that noir. Totally. Like he's coming off of one of the great crime comics. You want to get some of that in there. He's in the midst. That's only issue 25 That's right. is coming out. It's crazy. I love that transition, though. And I think it's, it's so as a short story, very satisfying. Absolutely. And also the fact that, like, salvation is an arm's length away. Yeah. Like, there's something super desperate about that. You yeah, know? And, and he acknowledges it. I think that was for you. Yeah. Yeah, he's not going to answer that call that would have saved his, saved his life. It's, it's very effective. It hits yeah. all the Matrix tropes. It gives us a pretty much a different setting for it. 
And it's uh, satisfying as a Lapham comic. Height of Matrix kind of fandom, because mm -hmm. it's before those other movies come out, I think. Yeah, yeah, it is. They, they reference that, you know, that they're coming. So straight from the filming of The Matrix Reloaded and Revolutions, uh, they're promoting it on their website. So you gang that up with Stray Bullets. I mean, this... Like I, uh, like I have th three free comics that that I put out, and they are consistently th the best selling stuff uh, of like whatever you make. Like this had to really pump pump up Dave Lapham's buying temperature within the industry. I hope so because it is you know like you go from this to this, like you can see stylistically what he's selling in Stray Bullets is what he's given you in that Matrix comic. So you'd hope that it would translate into a few additional sales. And, uh, of course, it's a free comic book day, so you're going to plug all the stuff that is available from you at that time. And look at the prolific Nature Man's, like, six trades, uh, Murder Me Dead, mm -hmm. you know, the complete graphic novel of that. And then uh, on the very next page, it's plugging issue 25, coming the very f next month. Yeah, very smart. With the Amy Race Car story. That's what you've got to do. So, a pretty cool, like, early... I love pulling out like what are the great free comic book day issues and i feel like this is a really successful one especially from an indie creator yeah really smart packaging uh taking advantage of the timing like you say with the next issue of stray bullets coming out the following month brilliant and uh riding a wave of something super popular and the the intro here from the editor is that uh dave lapham came to them with this idea so pretty smart for a self-publisher to be like hey guys i'm doing this uh I'm doing this free comic book day. Let's put the Matrix comic in there. They were receptive, and here you are. 20 years later, you get talked about on Cartoonist Kayfabe, so <laughs> success. <laughs> yeah, like, man, it's still an Al Capitan book, so I like I know how this works. You know, like, it's a loss leader. Yeah. And that is really betting on yourself, because, like, ganging it up with the Matrix, at a certain point, do you have to take out a loan to to print your thing in the hopes that a percentage of those people are going to like buy some stray bullets trades to pay that loan up. Because I imagine a lot of people bought this and you are taking, it's more than half price of a cut. It's almost like you're taking a three quarters cut on what you're paying to print the thing because you're selling it to the store for a quarter or something. Yeah. It's, it's uh, I don't know. You might be able to get close to breaking even. I know at one point, the black and white image books were like 18 cents to print. Mm -hmm. um, that's after your setup fees and things like that. So it, it's probably not too far over that quarter cost, but it's brilliant in the sales. Like yeah. how many extra orders did he get because of the Matrix comic? You know, it's like this had been out there. Yeah. This is like, oh, a new Matrix comic when Matrix is one of the hottest properties there is. Like really smart on Lapham's part or, or maybe on, on his uh, publishing wife's part, uh, but really smart marketing. Taking advantage, like I say, of the free comic book day, which at this time, it was a novelty the first couple of years. I can remember some comic book retailers that were not behind it. Yeah. They were not fans of it. Uh, of course, it's gone on to be this great moment in comic book. The best sales day of every comic shop. Yeah, a, a, a second Black Friday, even bigger than Black Friday. So it's a brilliant success. But in the early days, it wasn't. And there was no template to how to get the most out of it. And I think this is a brilliant example of... Be creative in, in your marketing. When you're digging in the in the back issue bins too, uh, most often it's Matrix side up. Sure, yeah. I I, I think uh, I don't think that would have been a surprise to lap him even at the time. Sure, <laughs> you know, calculated. I would call this, but uh, good for him. Good to go. I am. All right. Cartoonist kayfabe comic book Christmas in July is the last weekend, uh, the last Saturday in July. Put your free comics that you want to pledge and give to others uh, to inspire them to, you know, read more comics into your free local lending libraries in your neighborhood. We are going to do the same with our comps, with our back issues, with doubles that we have received over these past couple of years. I want you to do the same. Also, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell so that we can notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what is out there? Hulk Grand Design Monster and Hulk Grand Design Madness. 40-page uh, double-sized issues of the 60-year history of the Incredible Hulk. Perfect entry points for new Hulk readers or longtime Hulk fans. I'm writing, drawing, lettering, coloring. The uh, grand design treatment, if you will. So pick that up at your local comic shop, wherever you get comics. And join me on patreon.com slash jimrug, where you can find more of my comics art. You can download some of my out-of-print zines and mini-comics. 
Red Room Trigger Warnings, trade paperback coming out in September. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in Red Room Comics. Uh, if you see some issues out there, though, scoop them up, give them a shot. Each one has a complete story. Banned in 28 countries, banned in more than 10 comic shops. Uh, if you are in the unfortunate uh, desert of Red Room and you don't have any available in person, go to my link tree and you could order and pre-order uh, current and future Red Room comics. You could also hit up my Patreon and read those comics today. What else do we have, Jim? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. That's another great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Given those marching orders, we'll be on our way. Read more comics.